All right, example two. So here's the equation we're given, and we need to factor all the denominators to start. So r minus three cannot be factored, neither can r. We need to factor r squared minus three r. So again, we think of GCF first for any factoring questions, and the GCF is r. So we can write this equation as r over r minus three minus eight over r equals nine over r times r minus three. So we factored all the denominators, the ones at least that were possible. Now we need to find the LCD of all the denominators. So we write r minus three, r, and r times r minus three. So now we notice, or we ask ourselves, what cancels out an r minus three? Well, an r minus three. So we place an r minus three in the numerator for all of these fractions. Next, we move on to the next fraction. What cancels out an r? Well, an r. A uh, common mistake here is students think that, well, I can cancel this r with this r, which cannot be done. You can only ever cancel something on the numerator with something in the denominator, as long as there's products everywhere. This is not a multiplication or not a product, so you cannot actually cancel anything in the numerator with anything in the denominator. So to cancel out this r on the bottom, we actually need a separate r altogether. So we multiply that r in the numerator. So now we look at the last term. Well, how do we cancel this r with this r? How do we cancel this r minus three with this r minus three? So the LCD, the least common denominator that cancels out each of these denominators will be r times r minus three. Now we have to multiply each term of the equation by the LCD to clear all the fractions out. So we have r over r minus three. We have to multiply that by r times r minus three. Minus eight over r times r times r minus three equals nine over r times r minus three times r times r minus three. So I've taken each of the terms here and I multiply this guy by r times r minus three, multiply this guy by r times r minus three, and multiply this guy by r times r minus three. And the reason we did this is to clear the fractions, meaning r minus three in the denominator cancels with r minus three in the numerator. And the reason we can cancel here is because I have a product right there and I have a product right here. So whenever we have products across the top and across the bottom, we can cancel out terms that are like terms, or cancel out the same terms. So r cancels with r, r cancels with r, r minus three cancels with r minus three. So what we're left with is r times r minus eight times r minus three equals nine, just nine. Now a lot of students were, this is gonna be mentioned in other questions, but a lot of students make a mistake at this stage because they distribute an eight into these two terms when they really should be distributing a negative eight. So to avoid that mistake, I always tell people, write down what you have left over and then do the distribution or the foiling. Don't do it in the canceled state. Now, it's not to say that you'll get extra credit or you'll get more credit for writing out all your work, but writing out all your work is what prevents you from making that silly mistake or that simple error. Now, we need to foil out or distribute if possible. So there's nothing really to foil, but we can multiply r and r to get r squared. Then we can distribute the negative eight, which would give us negative eight r plus 24 equals nine. Now we have to multiply, all, multiply out the products and combine like terms, if any. Um, but there's not really anything to multiply out. So r squared minus 8r plus 24 equals 9 just stays there. There's nothing we can do. Now we have to solve the resulting linear or quadratic equation. This is a quadratic equation because the highest power is 2. And how do we solve quadratic equations? Well, we start by setting them equal to 0. So r squared minus 8r plus 24, we can move the nine over to the other side, minus nine equal to zero. Now how do we solve this quadratic equation? Well, we solve them by factoring. 
which is to say r squared minus 8r plus 15 equals 0. And now hopefully you remember how to solve equations by factoring. So we start at the very beginning. Is there a GCF to all three terms? Uh, no, because this leading coefficient is 1, and this guy doesn't have an r in it. So then we come down to how many terms there are. Well, there's three terms. Do the formulas of work? Well, the signs match up. I have a plus, minus, and then a plus. So signs work, but do you have perfect squares? So I can take the square root of r squared, but I cannot take the square root of 15. So the formulas are out. And then we move on to what's the leading coefficient. Is the leading coefficient 1? Sure is, which means I can use the AC method. So for the AC method, we find factors of 15. 1, 15, negative 1, negative 15. Uh, 2 doesn't work, 3 and 5, negative 3, negative 5. And we need factors that potentially add up to negative 8. Those are r minus 3 and r minus 5. Now the zero product property can be invoked, which says that if we have a zero on one side and products on the other side, each of those uh, factors must be set equal to zero because I don't know where the zero is coming from. So if r minus 3 is equal to 0, that means r would equal 3. And if r minus 5 is equal to 0, that means r would equal 5. Now remember, these are potential solutions. We don't know that these are solutions or not, or that you can think of them as answers, friends. Potential solutions. How do we know if they're solutions to the equation? We must take them and plug them into the original equation. So r over r minus 3 minus 8 over r equals 9 over r squared minus 3r. So we take 3 and 5. Let's say we plug in 3 first. We would get 3 over 3 minus 3 and immediately I know something bad is happening here. I don't even have to bother writing the rest of it because 3 minus 3 will be 0. Division by 0 is illegal. We cannot do it under any circumstances. So 3 can never be a solution because the denominator ends up being 0 if we plug 3 in. So r equals 3 is not a solution. Now, if we try the same thing with r equals 5, copy, now we get 5 over 5 minus 3 is 2, minus 8 over 5 equals 9 over 5 squared is 25, minus 5 times 3 is 15. So this gives us 5 halves minus 8 fifths equals 9 tenths. And again, you can use your calculator here, unless you want to subtract fractions by hand. You can type in 5 halves minus 8 fifths, press Enter. This gives us 0 0.9. And 9 over 10 I already know is, is 0 0.9, but you can divide it in your calculator as well, just to confirm. You get 0 0.9 equals 0 0.9. This is a true statement, so that means r equals 5 is the solution to this equation.